There is built-in stabilization in DaVinci Resolve. And in this video, I wanna show you how you can do that on the edit page. You can certainly go into the Fusion page and have a little bit more control over your stabilization and the different access points. But this is gonna be a very simple, very basic way to stabilize your footage in DaVinci Resolve. The stabilization modes are perspective, similarity, translation, and part of the studio version is camera gyro. Let's take a look at them in action. The footage I'm using is handheld footage. I did have a Peak Design strap on my Blackmagic cinema camera, and that's what's giving me a little bit more stabilization than just handheld. Here it is right out of camera. This is with perspective. This is with similarity. This is with translation. And as part of the studio version, this is with camera gyro. Perspective is gonna be the strongest stabilization. It's gonna compensate for complex movement, including rotation, scaling, and parallax movement. So if you have something moving in front of the camera, it warps the footage to stabilize changes in perspective. You may not always want this. You might want some of that movement in the front. Next up is similarity. This mode only adjusts across the X and Y axis. So it's adjusting rotation and translation. It doesn't attempt to adjust for parallax shifts. It's slightly less aggressive than perspective mode. Next up is translation mode. What translation mode is gonna do is it only focuses on stabilizing the position of the camera without adjusting for any rotation or scaling. It's the least invasive of the three modes and it's the simplest. So the camera gyro, gyro stabilization. There are a couple stipulations to this. First of all, you have to be shooting in RAW. I shoot on Blackmagic, so I know that it works with B-RAW. I know that it works with Cinema DNG. I don't know if it works with ProRes RAW. I know it doesn't work with ProRes or H.264 footage. If your format's not friendly to matching with camera gyro stabilization, that won't even show up in the dropdown. Uh, same way that if you have the free version, that won't show up in the dropdown. Um, so it's smart enough to know whether you can use that option or not. But what it does is uses the metadata that's part of that raw file to apply precise stabilization. Here's another pro tip here for you. It's great at reducing rolling shutter. So for this rolling shutter effect to work, what you want to do is set the strength to zero. It does minimal cropping on the image, fixes the rolling shutter, which leads us to the next point. There are some other controls that show up under the stabilization so the first control is gonna be strength, and that's really gonna determine the amount of stabilization that you want applied. If you're getting too much of a jello effect on the corners, if you're getting too much cropping, you can lower the strength and see if that doesn't fix that issue and give you maybe a little bit more of a natural look. A lot of this is going to depend on, do you want this handheld footage to look like it's on a slider, that it's locked down? or do you want it to look like handheld footage but not be as shaky? Luckily, it doesn't take long for it to process that footage. You can play it back in real time and see, did this work? If it didn't, go back and change the settings until you find something that works for what you need. Let's get back into the controls. So we talked about strength. Next up is the cropping ratio. Once again, if you like the stabilization, but the corners have that sort of jello warping effect, you can crop in more and get rid of that. If you know you're going to possibly need to stabilize things, then maybe use a wider lens or just keep that in mind when you're setting up your shot. So smooth will reduce the jitters by, a, by applying temporal smoothing to movement, which would make your camera motion transitions more gradual. So if you want fluid looking movements, if it's a slow panning movement or a tracking shot, that's where you would adjust the smooth. Just be aware that setting the smoothness too high can make your footage look a little unnatural. So in this particular shot, I'm trying to mimic a crane or jib shot, and all I'm doing is squatting down and standing back up. Here it is with perspective, similarity, translation, and gyro. There are a few other things to consider when you want stable footage, which is what focal length you're shooting on. So here I am on a 24. And then here I am with the 14. 
I can crop in a lot more if I want stable footage. Another thing to consider if you want to get stable footage is if shooting at a high frame rate or slow motion is an option, be it for your camera or the content that you're shooting, that will always help reduce some of the jitter and especially adding stabilization in post, it can definitely allow for a much smoother playback. I feel like translation and gyro are the two better modes to use. I don't shoot a lot of handheld footage. When I do, I may want to use a little bit of stabilization. So I'll go into perspective, hit stabilize and see what it does to the footage. If I'm happy with it, great. If I need to, if I don't like that, it, you know, if it cropped in too much. So I'd like to know what modes of stabilization you've been using and what modes of stabilization you have had the most success with. Please leave me a comment. I'd love to know if there's a formula that you use. Has the fusion stabilization been more successful for you? Thank you so much for watching, everybody. We'll see you.